Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Friday morning to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there, having a fantastic start to your day. A great week out there so far, a great ending to that week, start to your weekend, of course, unless you, you work on the weekends, which I know a lot of people do. Trust me, been there, done that. Used to work two jobs throughout almost my entire 20s, so I definitely get that. But regardless, hope you guys are doing well out there on this beautiful Friday morning and got you an update on the weather and what's going to happen today and then we'll even go a couple days here into the future and see what's coming up as i'm expecting a winter weather event across the central plains does this affect areas even further south like into texas areas of oklahoma there's a good possibility of that we'll talk a little bit on that but then we'll get more detailed here in the coming videos this um, boundary, uh, this cold front is making its way south. I'll actually be able to show it to you on water vapor loop that you see on your screen right now here in a second. We'll talk about how far east this cold air is going to get. It's going to pretty much impact everybody except maybe Florida. I think Florida is going to get kind of hoodooed with this, if you will. But I think it'll definitely get to portions of Florida. But we'll speak on all this, give you a brief update on the tropics, watching a new area of interest. Um, but as of now, it's uh, nothing serious to worry about. If you folks have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. If you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, you guys know the deal. Put those prayer requests in the comments so I can pray over it. It's a family-type atmosphere on this channel. We look out for one another, we pray for one another, and we glorify God on here. So put those in the comments below. With that being said, let's get rocking and rolling. All right, let's see if this thing's going to work for us. It is, so we're good to go. So... One of the first things I want to show you here on Water Vapor Loop, and it's going to be kind of hard to see on your screen. I know it should come up uh, for you folks. The max resolution on this is 1080. So uh, some people might not even realize that they're watching it in 720, maybe even 480. But anyways, if you look really closely down here in the panhandle of uh, Texas throughout Oklahoma, there is a line kind of surging south that's right into here. I get that back off and it's surging south. That is the initial cold front boundary moving south. Now this will stall and uh, sort of just lag. The coldest air is still on up here. I'll just do a little check mark and this is gonna come south too. But the initial cold front and kind of cool air surge is behind this cold front. So the panhandle of Texas, and I'll show you this here in a second when we get to the south central uh, frame here is uh, much chillier than the rest of Texas this morning, including western Oklahoma points um, points north. So it's very interesting when you can see this on satellite or water vapor loop, and there it is right here, stout cold front. Moist air surge continues for these regions. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean rain is falling, but we could even see a little rain in Louisiana today. That's a state that we really need the rain. And then, of course, you just see this deep digging trough all the way down into the western U.S. And there's that departing winter storm that's dumped several inches of snow on North Dakota, even areas of northwest Minnesota. Definitely let me know what you're seeing in like pretty much anybody in the Dakotas and the northern plains. I would love to know how much snow you guys got on the ground. Thank you all for answering uh, the request I made a couple of videos ago. Let me know where y'all you guys live. Um, it's really interesting. I, I love I'll jump on Google Maps when somebody throws in a city in a state that I've never heard of. And uh, just to kind of look at the town, I'm, I'm a big uh, map whiz. So I, I love jumping on Google Maps sometimes in my spare time and getting the little, the little human being right there on the uh, corner of your screen. And I'll dump it on the street just to see what that area of the country looks like. Um, it's always cool doing that. Um, but still dealing with moisture in the Great Lakes region. Guys, uh, this rain that you're dealing with in the Great Lakes region, it won't be rain for much longer. Cold air will move in, and you'll have the opportunity for some snow, even lake effect snow. Southeast continues to be pretty quiet. And uh, yeah, the big story is um, a little bit of quieter day today, but cold air is surging south with this trough and cold front associated with it. So that's what's going on. Based off water vapor loop, let's take a look at what's going on on the actual service. And I got the fronts pulled up. Let's get this in motion. I didn't realize I didn't have it in motion. And I got the surface fronts pulled up. As you can tell, there, there's the cold front right here. It's right here. And it matches up well with what you see right here digging down. So um, this um, radar, particular radar, is doing well. Figuring out uh, what is actually out there. There's the leftover snow still falling in northwest Minnesota. Not sure how much snow fell yesterday evening in areas of like western South Dakota. You guys would have to let me know. But cold front's coming. But 
the real cold air is lagging behind the initial cold front push. But dealing with some showers over areas of the deep south, the mid-south, even some shower activity across the Ohio River Valley, but nothing too widespread this morning. Take a look at um, the Storm Prediction Center, just a general risk of thunderstorms in the light green. Nothing really too crazy as far as severe weather to speak on. Now, we did have a confirm. I mean, it was definitely confirmed, a tornado down in Texas. Uh, I think it was yesterday morning. Um, and this thing looked pretty photogenic for this time of the year. Um, I want to say it was near San Antonio, um, but you guys in Texas would have to let me know. It was pretty wild. It was in a pretty populated area but we won't see i don't think we'll see anything like that today general risk of thunderstorms now we will see the chance for another, a lot of rain again dallas fort worth area points east the points south um a chance for some more rain to fall in these regions um there's a slight risk which means there's at least a 15 percent risk of flash flood guidance being exceeded within 25 miles in a given location so be careful with the rains today in texas and oklahoma uh, but we don't have any more flood watches up um, but as far as watches and warnings, freeze warnings are littered across areas of the Midwest, the Central Plains. And uh, you still got some lingering winter storm warnings. These will expire here in the coming hours, winter weather advisories. But you have winter weather advisories up for areas of Nebraska. Now, I, have, I don't have a clue unless by the time some of you folks watch this, I don't have a clue why there isn't any winter weather advisories in like Denver. Uh, Denver, Colorado, for example, could pick up several inches of snow. We, we will talk about that later in the video. Um, but I, I'm very surprised on why they don't have winter weather advisories scattered across this entire region right into here. I mean, heck, even down in the Kansas, um, models have really congealed together as far as uh, agreeing on a scenario that we're going to get winter weather in these areas. So I expect even a few winter storm warnings to get issued potentially. Even like the Denver area, Denver's going to drop like a rock throughout the day today, and then it's going to get very cold and snow's going to move in. Your first snow, snows of uh, the 2023-2024 fall season, winter season coming in here in the next day. So, yeah, I expect to see more winter weather advisories issued in the middle of the country for sure. Freeze warnings up for the Pacific Northwest, very cold conditions, and you got a lot of wind on going out here in California. All right, let's talk about the southeast first, like we always do. You still got this high pressure overhead, so a little bit of energy rotating on the bottom side of this high pressure could introduce some showers into the low country of South Carolina. We're going to have some showers that are possible in extreme northern Mississippi, western Tennessee. These are going to make it all the way probably into the bottom section of Kentucky, central Kentucky, and then we'll get some bigger opportunity for maybe some storms here in Arkansas. We'll talk about Arkansas in the south central time frame in these areas right up here too. Everybody else in the immediate, uh, excuse me, the immediate southeast is pretty quiet besides just some spotty showers in certain areas and we get into tomorrow morning. Some of this rain begins to scoot a little bit further east, but just in general, not a whole lot going on. Some showers are possible and Florida. Now moving to the Northeast um, area, you know, it, it it's not a whole lot going on either besides some, like I said, some spotty showers, kind of the same as the South, same as the Southeast. Uh, some showers could, I mean, make, make their way through the heart of Ohio, maybe Western New York State, Western PA, Northern New York State, Northern Vermont, New Hampshire, Northern Maine for sure. Just a, a kind of a sprinkly, if that's even a word, kind of drizzly, showery kind of day across the northeast um i would say new york city to boston the i-95 quarter washington dc philadelphia baltimore I, I would say you have a much less chance to see these showers but you continue to make your way through this and we get into tonight and then we'll get into tomorrow morning and we could have some you know heavier showers downpours falling in northern uh new york state maybe the adirondack region the finger lakes region but I mean, waking up to kind of the same deal that you're dealing with this morning, uh, just some just some spotty moisture out there, not a real big deal. Now the South Central U.S. Uh, we get a little bit further into this afternoon, some more scattered downpours, even some storms will get going in this area. So down here near San Antonio, the Austin region, you're going to get an opportunity for some sh some heavy downpours out here, some showers, even some storm action. Could get some action down here near. Corpus Christi, and then up through the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Very spotty in nature. It looks like popcorn in nature here, if you will. But, you know, you start to get in the Little Rock. Could get some storms that sneak really close to the Little Rock area. But you will continue to just have this area 
of a very slow moving storms cold front boundary right up here so yeah you know it, it'll be an interesting day in texas where one part of texas will be pretty chilly the other part will be still moist still warm and uh, you know we get into later tonight and some of this storm action will actually move back north and northwest and get back into the central areas of texas where you guys have already seen a lot of rain so could get a lot of rain again in the central part of texas overnight and then we're waking up tomorrow morning with a lot of rain falling around the dallas fort worth area uh, points southwest and more heavy rains entering southeast oklahoma extreme western areas of arkansas one thing i do want to show you today and of course we'll show you the temperatures again but I, but i want to kind of zoom in on the south central area this morning um you're, you're pretty much froze up in uh, i'm sorry in, into a northwest areas of kansas up into nebraska most of the nebraska except the extreme southeast corner of nebraska is below freezing western nebraska is downright frigid i mean into the teens so cold air has really gotten into this area so you got this a first initial kind of blast of cold air okay you know oklahoma city region waking up to the upper 60s low 70s this morning but right up the road it's in the 40s so we'll start off around 7 a.m this morning we'll keep this going oklahoma city for example tulsa you'll drop your temperatures will drop throughout the morning probably late morning afternoon hours for example you'll climb all the way up to 80 degrees in the dallas fort worth area and then this first initial cold front will kind of move through probably drop you down a few degrees sorry i heard an airport airplane in the background i thought it was thunder and i'm thinking there's no storms around so it kind of it kind of uh, freaked me out there for a second but anyways you get into this evening and you know the, the real cold air isn't um down here yet that's way up here this is kind of the initial front and you can actually see it on the temperature gradient right here right now this will drop the temperatures pretty dramatically but for example you know the cold front moved through amarillo into the wee hours of the morning overnight last night and your temperatures you know will rise today um but man you're locked into some pretty chilly air once you get up into nebraska but the real cold air kind of begins to dip in tomorrow um and then this is when a big push of cold air really pushes in probably tomorrow into sunday and uh, that's when you'll really get locked in. But there'll be an impressive impressive temperature gradient, um, most likely across Texas. Now, nothing too crazy. We've seen a lot more impressive temperature gradients where, I mean, I've seen it where Texas and, and near Brownsville is near 100 degrees and the panhandle is below freezing. Um, so we, we've seen definitely more impressive ones, but definitely a, 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 a weird day temperature-wise across the south, central, and central plains. North Central U.S. today, uh, the winter storm moves up into Canada. We're, we're left with the back end cold air. Now, before the cold air pushes in, we'll have one last moisture push into the extreme eastern UP of Michigan, northern and central Michigan throughout the afternoon hours. Some showers, even some storm action could make their way through all of pretty much all of Illinois, Indiana has a chance. Some storms are possible in southern sections of Michigan. Then this will trail off into areas of Ohio overnight tonight. And then behind it, cold air begins to mix in, starts to go over Lake Superior. And here comes these Great Lakes uh, snows beginning to crank up. Now, I, we, we'll, we'll get more detail on this on the next video. But, you know, this is an interesting kind of first um, wave of lake effect snow. But here it comes. There'll be an opportunity to wake up to this uh, probably tomorrow morning. And even some lake effect energy popping off this area of water right here. Um, you guys up here will have to let me know what they consider. I, don't, I'm, I can pull it up on Google Maps really quick. But I don't pretend to know the name of every single lake, body of water. I know there's a lot of bodies of water once you get into Minnesota. A lot of lakes. But um, as you can tell, you know, you're starting to get some moisture return that you're waking up to in South Dakota, even a little bit here in Iowa. And if you were to keep this going, we'll talk about this more here in a second. This is the beginning stages of another winter weather event that will make its way across Nebraska, Iowa, start off in Colorado, and eventually ooze down into Kansas. But that's getting into tomorrow. Now we'll talk about the Western US, much quieter day. Still some lingering snows in areas of the higher elevations of Idaho and Western Montana. And, uh, you know, it could pick up another inch or two of snow. It's very possible in southwest um, Montana and in areas of Idaho. But, you know, regardless, th this won't be a big deal. Could get some snows, um, some, some light to moderate snow that could make its way down to northwest Wyoming. Um, but 
it's pretty quiet. Some shower activity down here um, in California. I think I got uh, somebody who tunes in from San Diego that watches almost every video. I appreciate you. I really do. I know I don't mention your city much, but uh, definitely some gusty winds today. But um, yeah, I mean, outside of that, Western U.S., much quieter when you compare it to the um, to the last several days. That's for sure. Temperatures, hang on to it. Eastern U.S., if you're a warm weather fan, it's getting all the way up into the 70s, all the way up into Maine, 70s in the Michigan, 70s in the Southern Ontario, and uh, 80s and 70s just litter across the Eastern U.S., Washington, D.C., and Philadelphia, Baltimore, maybe, maybe even New York City makes a run at 80 degrees a day. And uh, if you're a warm weather fan, you know, I, I would encourage you to enjoy this. Uh, it'll most likely last through the weekend, maybe into Monday for certain areas. And then right around Halloween, the 30th or the 1st of November, temperatures will drop like a rock. But there's the cold front boundary uh, today. For example, today in Missouri and Illinois will be a highly interesting day temperature wise where, you know, the boot hill in Missouri, for example, will get well into the mid 80s. But you head on up to like Joplin, Missouri, only into the 40s or 50s for highs. Um, it'll be like this in Arkansas more than likely tomorrow. Illinois, another another state. You know, the boundary will be right over Peoria. Uh, you'll get into the 80s in southern Illinois, but you go up into the northwest corner of Illinois, only into the 40s. So the cold air is moving in. Very interesting day temperature-wise. You're locked into the freezer up in Montana, into the Dakotas, even areas of western Minnesota. Very cold even into Nebraska. Certain areas will not get above freezing. And the initial cold air blast moving in, but not too bad yet. But I think it'll get much chillier than this here in the coming days. Much below average temperatures have settled in over the western U.S. So let's give you an update on the tropics. We're not going to talk about TAM anymore. Um, but it does have a chance to kind of redevelop. But not going to speak on that really, guys. But this is the new area. This has a 30% chance to develop down here in the southern Caribbean. This is the time of the year where you have to watch this area. Sometimes you can get hurricane threats in the Central America. Uh, a lot of energy likes to hang out around here this time of the year because you have frequent troughs that dig down to the Gulf of Mexico that prevents and basically protects the lower 48 from getting tropical activity. Um, but we'll watch this area of interest for sure. And we'll, we'll give you some model guidance on it. And here it is. Just shows a big blob of green down here, a lot of tropical moisture. And it does show a little vortice, a little piece of energy that tries to creep up and flirt with and the idea of affecting like Jamaica, but you know, it's a very compact piece of energy. Um, it is close to a subbed out 1000 millibar, um, uh, low pressure. So we'll have to watch this. This, you know, could, could creep up into Cuba or the Dominican Republic, Haiti. We'll have to watch it. And this, you know, creeps up into the Southwest Atlantic as we get into next week. And, uh, you know, after that, you know, we get into kind of, a uh, 10 days out, very unreliable time frame, but in the in the long term and kind of way out in the long range, you know, it, it keeps flirting with the idea of something getting going in the Caribbean. I wouldn't be surprised if it does. If, if this is the time of the year where that happens, but you know, the 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 other time of the year that we're pretty, you know, confident that's going to happen is 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 you're always going to have frequent cold fronts to dig down to the southeastern US this time of the year. I mean, we're at this point, pretty deep into November, and it, it's it's very difficult uh, to get, at this point, even tropical systems into Florida. Um, if there is going to be one area you really want to watch for late in hurricane season, it is Florida, even the Gulf Coast. I mean, 2020 hurricane season is a great example of crazy things that can happen in the Caribbean. But we look at the European, it just shows that big blob of green down there. That's it. Now, it does get more of a dominant piece of energy, kind of does what the GFS does, kind of slings us into Jamaica. If you're viewing from Jamaica, and I know I got some viewers from that area, and I appreciate you very much. It's kind of like Canada. People in Jamaica are always very kind on my comments, always nice people, always. Um, but I would watch this. Um, as of now, does it look like a cause of major concern? No, but, you know, of course, we need to watch. It could bring some rain, some gusty winds for you folks, and we'll, we'll figure this one out as we go. But the European gets this energy into the Bahamas. And the cold front moves through and then kicks this out. And uh, yeah, we get 10 days out and just shows a lot of moisture down here into the Caribbean region, but nothing too concerning. Now, we need to watch for this winter weather. This is what kind of baffles me a little bit. We got the freeze warnings here in this purple color, almost all the way down into um, Kansas City. Um, but you know, I expect this to extend down to Kansas City here in the coming uh, next 12 to 24 hours. But um, freeze warnings up for Denver. That's it. Winter storm warnings up for the Rockies of Colorado. 
I'm very, very surprised there's at least not winter weather advisories up for Denver. I think this will change by the time some of you folks watch this video. I'm surprised there's not winter weather advisories where Northeast Colorado connects to Nebraska. Um, there is winter weather advisories where the highest confidence of winter weather is going to fall here in the northern and kind of central areas in Nebraska. But I expect this to change in the coming hours and even day. If we look at the GFS on what could potentially happen with this, we get into tomorrow morning. Here comes the winter weather developing across the Rockies of Colorado. And then sure enough, as we're getting into tomorrow afternoon, winter weather begins to take over uh, the, the northern section of Denver, especially, I'm sorry, the northern section of Colorado, including Denver. Uh, you get a stripe of snow that really develops over portions of Nebraska. It could be heavy at times. This snow could make it all the way into Wisconsin, could deliver a dusting of snow into Wisconsin, could deliver maybe an inch or so of snow. Um, it doesn't bring much snow into southern Minnesota, but I'm going to show you the HRRR model too here in a second. <clears throat> Losing my voice. Um, but I mean, as we're waking up Sunday morning, guys, we got an all out wintery mix on going in areas of Kansas, guys. The, the orange is sleet, the pink is freezing rain. And look at this freezing rain falling into the panhandle of Texas, Oklahoma. We will get much more detailed on this tonight. Stay tuned if you're in these areas and very interested in how this is going to happen. I'm going to get very detailed on soundings and, and why it's falling the way it's falling, things like that. But we get into Sunday afternoon, guys. I mean, it shows winter weather flirting with the idea of getting all the way down to Oklahoma City. Okay, and this continues and even shows some sleet, a little bit of a wintry mix down here. I mean, well, well south of Amarillo. Okay, so we need to watch this. You know, you look at the HRRR model and how it develops with this. And I love Weather Bell, but I do wish that it had a better way to view this area of the country right here. It really does not. It only sections, sections it out by states. But um, if we look at um, the HRRR model, and it does show that idea of more snow getting into southern Minnesota, but here it comes. We're getting into tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon. There's that stripe of snow, and it could be pretty heavy in these areas. This could drop a, a quick couple inches into northern Iowa, southern Minnesota. Heck, maybe even southwest Wisconsin. If you live in this area, tomorrow afternoon, I would watch for a band of snow that tries to make its way into your area. And then we get into tomorrow evening, and the snow continues. And then as we're getting into tomorrow night, this is when the ice could become a concern in western areas of Kansas, even into the panhandle of Oklahoma, some freezing rain could fall. You gotta watch this. Snow still falling in Colorado, Denver, and this only goes out 48 hours. So let's take take a look at the snowfall from the National Weather Service. This is why I'm confused. There's no winter weather advisories, and maybe I'm looking at something wrong, but I even double checked a couple other things and heck we even went on the weather channel, which is always first to put alerts on there. Um yeah, just freeze warnings. So <laughs> Uh, National Weather Service calling for several inches of snow in Denver. I mean, I think it's going, if you look really closely, it's going for about six to eight inches of snow. We'll see if this actually falls. A few inches of snow here into northeast Colorado. We take it up into Nebraska. All right, a stripe of two to three inches of snow is possible. Uh, certainly uh, North Platte, Grand Rapids, could, Grand Rapids, but um, could um, see, uh, what is it? Um, man, I am brain, I don't even know where my phone is. There it is. What, am I brain farting that um that town in Nebraska? I should know that. Um, I know people are probably screaming it to me on the screen right now. Grand Island. I called it Grand Rapids. Grand Island is going to be right on the fringe of some accumulating snow, maybe an inch. But I would say if you live in North Platte, you're definitely good for maybe one to three inches of snow. Could get a dusting of snow all the way down to Omaha. It's very possible. A little bit more snow in these southern counties of South Dakota. And then we go into the upper Midwest, and this is between now and Sunday evening. Um, you know, it's starting to pick up on that lake effect snow. But, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see if we can get, you know, maybe an inch of snow um, in southern areas of um, Minnesota, maybe a dusting snow into Wisconsin. It's very possible. Now, one thing I want to mention, guys, is uh, we'll go back down here, and then we'll talk about, let's go to Kansas. Let's look at this freezing rain, right? Okay. They're calling for accumulations of freezing rain, a few one hundredths of an inch. You even got these little pockets right here. When you see these dark pinks, this indicates a tenth of an inch of ice or more. That is when it becomes kind of an issue. Um, once you get up to a quarter inch, that's when you get ice storm criteria ice. But 
This is going to warrant winter weather advisories in these areas. I really think it is. A few one hundredths of an inch of an ice is a solid glaze. Uh, so if you live down here in these regions, I certainly think you have a chance of freezing rain. I, you know, if I look at areas like Dodge City, Garden City, along the western uh, Interstate 70 corridor, Colby, uh, Kansas, uh, could make it all the way down to Woodward, uh, Liberal. Yeah, you guys, I mean, maybe even down to Amarillo. It's a real shot at a glaze of freezing rain with this. Okay, we'll talk a lot more detail on this in tonight's video. But we talk about the cold coming. We mentioned this very um, a, a lot. But uh, there's the colder than average anomalies, temperatures, and this is in Celsius, guys. I always want to mention that. Um, it's very, it's much easier to jump on tropical tidbits. But just think of the blue colors you see on your screen. That is below average temperatures. It's crazy. You know, you stop it here. This is the evening of October 30th. Um, you're hanging on to above average temperatures for dear life for Georgia and the Carolinas and Southern Virginia and then areas of Alabama. But look how cold it is in Texas. Now, just because you see these pinks and purples, that doesn't mean it's like zero degrees, but it's well below average. And then we get into the last day of October, your Halloween, whatever you may be doing. And uh, yeah, it looks like it looks like it's going to be a chilly Halloween for even like the Mid-Atlantic, the Northeast and the rest of the country. So warming back up a little bit for the Western U.S., but, um, you know, Florida hanging on to it by dear, for, for dear life, these above average temperatures. But as soon as you get into November 1st, this fully, fully takes over all of the eastern U.S. And it does get down into Florida. It's just I think areas like Miami, um, it, it's going to be hard to get down there. But, man, this is – um, I've said it – I've already said it the last few videos, and, and people always pick with me on uh, social media like Mitch. You got to wait till the day after Thanksgiving to put your Christmas tree up. And trust me, I used to do that. Um, that was a tradition. I think that's a lot of traditions in, in most people's family is it's always exciting right out right after Thanksgiving dinner or or, or Thanksgiving or, or Friday after Thanksgiving to put the Christmas tree up. But um, to, to me, the older I've gotten, the more I've established more traditions in my own family and just having a wife that totally agrees. Um, to me, I just love seeing that Christmas tree up. I love now I hold off of the outside decorations for like mid-November. But even then, I put it up before Thanksgiving, and I just love looking at it. It's something about coming home, and um, even here in South Carolina where it's warmer, something about coming home and seeing the warm glow of the Christmas tree, the Christmas lights, and you know, you start to get into December, and it's already nighttime by the time you get home from work, and Christmas lights are on. It just brings a smile to your face. So, um, I'll never understand why people wait all the way until early December to put it up. Um, you only get now. Now I will tell you guys. Um, as soon as Christmas is over, I do not wait till New Year's, um, New Year's Day or after New Year's to t take the Christmas tree. Now, I'll be completely honest with you guys. I know people are like, what about the epiphany? What about uh, this, that, and the other? But um, typically, a couple of days after Christmas, I start taking it all down. Um, but anyways, there's a little background story of how uh, the Mitch West family decorates. You know, guys, you always get a side story. God bless all y'all. Have a great Friday. And I about an 80% chance I'll have you guys a video this evening. God bless all y'all. Have a great day.